You already, you already cleared it. So I can see why this is a popular uh, technique for wood. Throw some oil on this and it, you know, it looks really nice. Um, I'm gonna use this for outdoors, so I'm actually gonna use automotive enamel to protect it a little more. But anyways, that's how it looks. So here's the finished plow. So as you can see, I painted it. I added uh, the cutting edge, which is just an old, uh, just an old aluminum street sign that we had. Cut it in half, and uh, you know it was a perfect length to put inside. I just used automotive paint after the uh, what was it a uh, show sugi ban technique, where you torch the wood, then you uh, brush it. And you either use oil or some kind of paint over it. I use automotive paint on this. Um, that is the back right here. So what I did for mine is I got this uh, pinto hook adapter. And it's actually like a six position pinto hook um, adapter. So you can put it different levels. I thought that would be uh, pretty useful for my plow setup. And so all I did to mount this to this is just drilled the holes right here and put two um, half inch pins. And the this section of wood with the two by four, <clears throat> it's about three inches thick. And, you know, I didn't think that was gonna hold up. So what I did was I got some pipe, some steel pipe and, you know, put it in there for reinforcement. So now it's really, really, really sturdy. It's really strong. It should be able to do the job. Um, and then, so that there's no side movement or minimal side movement on the plow. I attach these uh, chains, you know, these little uh, eyelets right here on each side. And then some chains right here on a stainless steel carabiner, just to the tow hooks that are on, uh, you know, stock Jeeps. So what happens is if you hit something hard on one side, the chain, the chain stops it from moving that way. Same thing this way. If I hit this, minimal movement. This thing is pretty much made of, uh, you know, a lot of recycled parts. But really, the most expensive thing right now is just about, I want to say it's in the man, 85, 90 ish dollar range that I've spent to make it. And really the only reason for that because you can totally make this for cheaper you can make it you know you can put rubber right here you can make it out of a, a garage door uh, you know the things they use for the bottoms of garage doors um you know you can use all kinds of things but really the reason this was even close to 100 bucks was because of this guy here this thing was 50 bucks on its own but i mean if you could find this used or if you could find something else cheaper then you know by all means go for it so the reason i went with this design is because there's actually a uh, commercially made plow. It's called like a snow sport or snow sport, snow master. I think it's snow sport. And it's pretty much a plow that works with no electronics. It's all mechanical. Um, you know, when you push it, it stiffens up, you know, just like this one. When, it, when you push forward, it's, it stiffens up and it stays straight. And then when you pull back, 
it actually has a give. So it gives. See if you can see how it lifts up like that. So what that allows is for when you when you come uh, when you're driving backwards, you don't bring a lot of snow back with you. And pretty much I did the same concept except that I mounted it with, you know, a pinto hook uh, receiver hitch adapter, and it's on with uh, two half inch pins. We're gonna get snow and. Uh, so today's Monday. It might start snowing tomorrow night, but it's for sure gonna snow Wednesday and Thursday and We might get about a foot and a half two feet and I mean we got a long driveway over here Pretty long driveway So When this fills up with snow, I don't care what kind of car you got you're stuck Not only that, but we're off uh we're on the side of a main highway here. So the city plows or the county plows, man, they just block us in right here. This whole area gets blocked in. So I get like a four, five foot wall by four foot, you know, long, not sorry, not long, but uh, four foot thick by four foot tall wall of snow. And uh, yeah, pretty much stuck unless I dig it out. So the plan is to, uh, you know, before the snow builds up to, to plow it and pile it up, you know, in that corner over there that you guys saw. And most likely what's gonna be doing the plowing is this guy. This is actually a brand new Jeep we just got, um, family car. We just ha had a baby four months, so we need something bigger to take the family on, uh, on the adventures. And I uh, just finished installing the lights, some amber lights on it and the uh, front hitch on it, so. All I gotta do is attach the adapter to it and mount it the same way. I just decided to make it this way because I thought it was a pretty uh, easy way to install and she looks pretty durable, so we'll see. The only thing I might add to this, and you know, I'll find out after, uh, you know, by Thursday I'll find out if it holds up, is uh, I might just put some uh, really thin sheet metal here. You know, just use some sheet metal screws, block this whole area and then this right here and then, and then this. And the only reason for that is so that, you know, the impact of the snow or whatever I hit doesn't start chipping away the paint and, you know, then it just starts getting all wet and soggy and then falls apart. That's about it though. Um, and I might not even do that depending on how it goes. I decided to use an aluminum sign, street sign that we already had. And if you look right here, well, you probably can't see here, but if you look on the back, it's about a three and a half, four inches where there's no wood support. And the reason for that is I wanted to have uh, some bend in it. You know, if I get stuck on something backing up or going forward, I don't want this wooden part to break. And I, you know, it's just aluminum. I can either bend it back or it doesn't get damaged. Or at the end of the day, I could just replace another aluminum part on <clears throat> with another aluminum sign on there or completely, I can completely use a, I was even thinking of using a, old sleds, plastic sleds for snow. They would probably do the job. They probably wouldn't break either or some kind of rubber, but I already, you know, the holes are already there. So, you know, that part is replaceable. Um, but yeah, there you go. We'll see uh, how it works out.
<clears throat> so yeah, the uh, plow ended up working pretty damn good. Um, you know, I left the driveway pretty clean. Uh, the most it left is maybe like an inch in some of the spots, but it was able to bust out right here on the side. You can see the big old pile did over there. It did pretty good. And uh, everything worked as planned. The chain stopped it from moving side to side. The aluminum bends forward and backwards. And yeah, eventually that aluminum has to be replaced, but um, I already knew that. And then the only thing that I'm gonna upgrade on this thing so far is these uh, pins. I got the ones that have the, uh, like this new, you know, you can just go like that and then they come off. But, you know, they're really flimsy and I did have some doubts. I decided to try them out and this one actually bent. So it actually doesn't really lock anymore. And part of the pin bent as well, which makes sense because this design by default has to have a slit right here. So that this can, you know, slide in and out right here, which it weakens the pin right there. So of course it's gonna bend. So what I'm gonna do is gonna get, um, I'm gonna get the uh, traditional style. The ones that have like the lock right here with the key. That should be much, much sturdier. So once I get that, it should be uh, a lot better. Oh, and actually I'm gonna get ones that are a, a little bit longer, maybe an inch longer. That way the plow has more, uh, it can uh, have, it has more give when you're backing up. Um, so you bring less snow with it and you know, leaves a cleaner driveway. But yeah, other than that, I mean, everything survived and uh, pretty pleased with it.